sharing his screen. And uh, yeah, with this talk, we will wrap it up. The, the minute. So thank you so much, Roy. And uh, Karti, whenever you are ready, Jeff, you can just jump in and start. Oh, uh, yes. Um, so, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it and we can hear you pretty clearly. So. Okay, great. Um, so, let me just get started. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, warm welcome for everyone who's uh, joining this online meetup. And uh, thank you to Carlos and the rest of the team for making this event happen. Um, if, you, if you guys missed my introduction, um, I'm Karthik. I work as uh, developer relations lead at DGraph Labs. And uh, all throughout this talk, we're going to learn uh, more about what DGraph is all about. Um, so this talk is about how to build um, GraphQL API functions uh, for Twitter clone uh, just in 10 minutes. And we'll see how using dgraph, just by composing a GraphQL schema file, uh, we can uh, automatically get all the GraphQL API functions, GraphQL, uh, the current GraphQL API functions which are necessary uh, uh, are using which you could build a Twitter clone on your own. So let's just get started. Um, firstly, who's this talk for? <clears throat> if you are one among those who want to get started with GraphQL in minutes and uh, don't want to worry much about server side, uh, this talk is definitely for you. And uh, having said that, it's not just important to get started fast or getting started uh, in an easy way, but it's also uh, you might be concerned about the scalability and performance of your GraphQL API as your application grows and your application becomes more complex. Um, we'll uh, address that too, and we'll see how uh, DGraph solves all of these challenges. So <clears throat> I guess like now, uh, most of the viewers are familiar with uh, GraphQL schema. Uh, so a GraphQL schema essentially represents a graph. So next time when you look at a GraphQL schema, uh, do remember that what you are looking at is a graph. and and a GraphQL schema represents uh, your application data graph. Let's learn a bit more, bit more about uh, uh, how a GraphQL schema represents uh, a graph, and let's do a live exercise. So let's just compose um, a GraphQL schema for a tweet. Um, and this is how, in general, uh, you know, this is an approach which you could use in general to compose a GraphQL schema for your UIs. Um, and this exercise kind of uh, gives you a streamlined approach towards composing the GraphQL schema, even for the most complex UIs. Um, so let's look at this UI. Uh, we, are, we all are familiar with this. This is uh, the UI for a tweet. And this is a tweet uh, which we just saw a while back when GraphQL Hong Kong uh, made up was, uh, an, an announcement was made. And uh, the first step is to identify all the entities uh, in your UI. In this case, we have uh, a Twitter user who's actually sending out the tweet. In this case, uh, GraphQL Hong Kong is a Twitter user. And um, what other entities do we see here? Right? We, we have the actual tweet, which is the second entity. And uh, we also have at the rate mentions. Um, and at the rate mentions are, again, Twitter users. Right? Uh, so, so, so even the entity uh, who's posting the tweet is also a Twitter user. And also the mentions are again Twitter users. So we now have two entities. One is a Twitter user and then the actual tweet. And uh, the third entity could be the hashtags, right? Uh, in this tweet, we only see one hashtag. Uh, we have two, um, but uh, in general, you can have any number of uh, hashtags um, in a tweet. So um, now we have three entities, namely uh, the uh, GraphQL user of uh, the tweet itself, I'm sorry, that Twitter user, uh, the tweet itself, and then we have a hashtag. The next step is to represent all these entities as, as a node in a graph. So we had three entities, and now we represent all of them as nodes, namely, of uh, now we have user node, tweet node, and a hashtag node. The next step uh, is to see how these different nodes are related to each other. Do we have a relationship between a user node and a tweet node? Um, if you look at your uh, the UI, yes, we definitely have a relationship, right? Our user, our Twitter user is the one who actually authors a tweet. 
So let's represent this relationship using an author's edge from a Twitter user node to a tweet. And next, let's see like uh, from a UI, is a tweet in any way relates to a Twitter user? It does, right? Uh, a tweet can mention uh, a Twitter user. So let's represent this relationship between a tweet and the user, a Twitter user using a mentioned edge. So edge, uh, these edges essentially uh, represents the relationships between these nodes. And again, uh, the relationship between a tweet and a hashtag node is, uh, can be represented using a tag with edge. So uh, again, quickly, uh, so we started with our UI and then we represented, we have firstly identified all the entities in our UI. We identified three entities. We represented each of the entities as a node and then we represented um, the relationship between these entities as edges between these nodes. So the next step is to translate this graph diagram, uh, what we call as an application data graph uh, to a GraphQL schema. That's relatively easy to do because uh, as I mentioned earlier, every GraphQL schema essentially represents a graph, the graph of your application data uh, or the data requirements of your UI. So let's see how to now, uh, how do we translate this into GraphQL schema? The first step is to represent each of the nodes um, as types in your GraphQL schema. So we had three nodes and, and now we represent uh, or we create GraphQL schema types for each of these nodes. And you could see that we now we have three types that is like type user, type tweet and type hashtag. And the next step is that now we have the templates for all the types corresponding to each of the nodes from our graph. The next step is to represent the relationship or this edges uh, between the nodes. So the way uh, we represent this relationship is by creating a field uh, for your types where uh, the field would refer another type. In this case, you have type user, which refers type tweet via an author edge. So similarly, uh, if you see the type tweet, the type tweet refers back um, a type user via and mentioned it. Right, and the next step, once we have the relationships of, you know, represented using uh, the types referring to each other, is to fill in what other fields each of these entities would have and what are its types. Uh, for instance, for type user, each user would have a unique ID, which would be, which is represented by the uh, GraphQL standard type, the ID type. And then a user would have a username. A Twitter user also would have a user handle, which is a string. And uh, we again have the relationship uh, of a user with a tweet via an author um, Then, So um, after we represent the relationships, the next step is to fill in uh, the fields for each of the types. And similarly, we now fill in the fields for the other types, right? We have of uh, a tweet has a unique ID of uh, a tweet also has a tweet message, which is a string. Uh, I think in, a, in the last slide, we missed out on representing the relationship between a tweet and a hashtag. So now we represent that using the tag with edge. Uh, now we have the GraphQL schema, right? Uh, we started with your application UI and we added that the data graph for your UI and then we represented the data graph as a GraphQL schema. And what you see now is essentially the representation of all the data requirements uh, for your UI as a GraphQL schema. And the next step is just by using this GraphQL schema file, we're gonna auto-generate all the CRUD GraphQL functions necessary uh, to build a Twitter clone or to power all the data requirements of your UI. And let's see how to do that using dgraph. And before we do that, let's understand a bit more about uh, what is dgraph in the first place. dgraph is uh, uh, the world's most advanced graph database. Um, and dgraph is open source, is a uh, transactional and uh, distributed um, native graph database. And uh, here is what's exciting for uh, 
the folks from the GraphQL community. dgraph is the only native GraphQL database which um, natively interprets um, and distributes, stores, and executes GraphQL, which means that GraphQL is a first-class citizen for dgraph. It's and GraphQL um, is not an additional layer on top of the database. You might have uh, used other database alongside GraphQL by having an additional GraphQL layer on top of the database, which translates the client GraphQL queries uh, into the corresponding database query uh, language. But in case of dgraph, uh, GraphQL is just built in right within the database, and GraphQL is a first class citizen. So yeah, uh, there's no layering required, and dgraph is also built from ground up to serve GraphQL like uh, workloads. So with dgraph, um, all you need to know to get started is just GraphQL. Uh, we're gonna just see, uh, in, you know, soon see it in action, uh, wherein we'll take the GraphQL schema file which we composed and just hand it over to dgraph, and dgraph out of the box auto generates all the GraphQL CRUD functions you need, and um, then. As your application evolves, uh, you know, when you need new product features, all you need to do is again come back, edit your GraphQL schema file, and iterate on your APIs. So not just you can get started with GraphQL, you also iterate only using GraphQL. And uh, dgraph, uh, uh, the database admin endpoints uh, are also GraphQL. So which means like all the database operations, uh, you can perform using the GraphQL endpoint with, uh, which dgraph provides. And uh, dgraph is built, for, every database is built for a very specific uh, kind of workloads. Uh, and uh, in case of dgraph, it's built from ground up, it's built from scratch uh, to be able to efficiently serve and scale for graph like or GraphQL like or graph traversal like workloads. So if you are a GraphQL user and if you're building GraphQL applications, um, the kind of workloads your database uh, would be operating in once you have a lot of client queries coming in. Uh, because you're using GraphQL in the front end, um, dgraph efficiently resolves all the data requirements of your UI in one network call, in one shot, because that's what it's been built from uh, ground up to serve efficiently and scale for. Um, and okay, let's just see it in action. Um, let's run dgraph. Uh, we are using dgraph standalone container. Uh, this is not a recommended way to run dgraph in production, but this is great for quick start purposes. So let's uh, start dgraph. <clears throat> so the database is up. And so this is a GraphQL schema which we just composed, which represents the UI for a tweet. And the next step is to submit this GraphQL schema file uh, using the curl request uh, to dgraph. So let's let's do that. So this is successful. Uh, we just submitted this GraphQL schema file. And now you can uh, use any of your favorite GraphQL editors. Um, we'll use GraphQL Playground. Um, if you're just uh, powering up your GraphQL uh, tool or GraphQL Playground, just uh, point it to HTTP colon slash slash uh, localhost 8080 slash GraphQL. Uh, so let's just look at uh, the introspection. And you could see that dgraph has auto-generated uh, GraphQL CRUD functions. Now, for each of the types which is submitted to dgraph, dgraph auto generates five GraphQL functions. Um, for instance, corresponding to the type user, we have get user, uh, query user, update, you know, uh, delete and add user auto generated. And uh, similarly, you know, you can see that uh, corresponding to the type tweet which is submitted, we have get tweet, uh, we have query tweet. We have add tweet, update tweet, and delete tweet. So um, for, as I mentioned, for each of the GraphQL type which you submit, dgraph auto-generates uh, five GraphQL uh, CRUD functions. So now let's just add some uh, tweet uh, using the mutation. Let me just quickly see, there seems to be an error. Um, Oh, okay, I, I just see that uh, 
um, a value is missing. Uh, let me just quickly grab the mutation from the schema again. Uh, we have the mutation. Oops, there seems to be an uh, error. This um, is because type tweet requires a value for field author. I think uh, just missing. Okay, um, let's just move forward. I think it's just an issue with uh, uh, the mutation format. And uh, uh, basically, once you submit the schema, uh, dgraph auto generates all the CRUD API functions for you. And um, then, uh, once you have the CRUD functions, let's say uh, you start to iterate on your application, and then you have a new requirement for your app that is to be able to um, to be able to have a search feature uh, for your user handle. Uh, so it's it's very simple now. All you need to do is just come back uh, to your schema, uh, just edit the schema, and uh, and add. A simple directive to your schema. In this case, we add at the rate search uh, by hash. Uh, and just adding this entry, making this simple edit to your schema, uh, gives you ability to search for users based on the user handle. So uh, just go back to the schema and just make this simple entry. So let's just uh, grab the schema change for user handle and go back to our schema. Let's add this, save the file, and let's just resubmit um, the schema file to dgraph. Okay, so this is successful. Um, so now, uh, just on adding a simple directive, you would be able to uh, query for the user, right? So um, you can filter, add a filter to say, hey, um, by the way, find the user by name um, Hackintosh Rao and give the user's information and you can then request for you know, uh, all the tweets the user has authored. And then you can even probably request for the hashtags um, of those tweets. So we have tagged with and then hashtag. And the introspection of makes it really easier to be able to get all the auto generation recommendations while you compose your schema or your queries. Um, so let's say now um, we are able to search for user based on the user handles. How about we uh, that your product now needs a new feature to be able to search for user by user names too? Uh, again, pretty simple. Um, come back to the schema and uh, just add a new directive uh, at the rate search, search for user uh, by hash. Hash essentially sets an hash index in the database, which allows you to search user by user's name. Um, so let's just um, do that. So let's just make that simple addition into onto our schema. And now let's just resubmit uh, the schema to dgraph. And that's it. Uh, you should be able to run a query to now to search for user uh, based on user's name. Similarly, uh, let's say now um, you want to search for user uh, just by using user's first name or last name instead of the full name. Uh, all you need to do is just again uh, come back and edit your GraphQL schema 
right? Uh, to change the index from for username uh, from hash to term. Um, so this essentially helps you to uh, enables you to search for user based on users of uh, a first name or last name or any of the terms in user's name. Uh, need not necessarily use uh, the complete string of the user name. So very simple. Okay, just come back, uh, edit the index, resubmit the schema, and now you should be able to search uh, just by uh, using the user's first or last name or any of the term in user's name. And similarly, DGraph offers a variety of indices. Uh, and, and it's very simple. Every time you need to add a new product feature, come back, add a new database index to your GraphQL types, and um, resubmit it. And, and DGraph rebuilds the index on the live. There's no need to even restart the server. And uh, you should be able to then uh, use a new, a new more powerful querying facilities. For instance, uh, let's say to power your uh, Twitter search, you want uh, to be able to search by search using a regular expression. For instance, uh, I'm Karthik Graf. Let's say if you want uh, Karthik Graf to be in your user search, in your Twitter search, even if you use a substring of my name, let's say ART. Um, in, in such a case, you need a regular expression search capabilities. Again, very simple. Just come back, um, add the regular expression index, uh, save. Same process, resubmit, uh, then just come back and uh, you should be able to run this query uh, wherein now we are searching just based on uh, a substring in the user's name and uh, as soon as you type ERT in the search box, uh, then you should be able to get the recommendation of uh, Karthik in the list of users you're searching for. Um, right. So again, uh, with DGraph, as I mentioned, it's not just you can get started over there uh, using the database just using GraphQL, but also you can iterate uh, as your product requirements evolves, as your UI requirements evolves, just by using GraphQL. Now, uh, similarly, like you know, we moved on from our last schema to extend the schema uh, to offer new uh, search capabilities. So if you look at type tweet. Uh, we've added uh, a full text search for uh, based on uh, the content of the tweet, uh, that is the strings in the tweet itself. And uh, similarly, if you look at hashtag, we added a regular expression based search for hashtags too. So, um, so we just looked at few of the database indices which DGraph offers. And every time you come back, uh, if you want to uh, make use of this database index to power your application feature, you just edit the GraphQL schema file. Uh, we saw regular expression, hash, now we see full text search. And also uh, DGraph offers other advanced indexes like uh, GeoSearch if you're building a, a mobile application or a web application uh, which uses uh, uh, location data, you know, which where you want to build queries like find me all the restaurants within one kilometer of this location or, or within a, a polygonal structure. It's uh, uh, super easy to do that. Uh, and and uh, and we are adding uh, more powerful uh, capabilities, more powerful indices database. And all you need to do is every time to make use of it is to come back and edit your GraphQL schema file. So um, let's just uh, quickly extend our uh, schema and update our schema uh, with this full fledged schema. Okay, here we have the full fledged schema. Um, and now again, just resubmit the schema. And go back to the playground. So now we can do a full text search uh, based on uh, the content of the tweet itself. Uh, which uh, uh, which was not possible before, and all we had to do to enable uh, this feature is to add a very simple uh, directive to your GraphQL schema. So let's move on, um, and uh, let's just have a quick recap, right? Uh, now, with DGraph, all we uh, did to obtain our 
the CRUD GraphQL functions uh, is to compose your GraphQL schema. So if you're an app developer, if you're a GraphQL developer or building your mobile application or web application, um, start with your UI, identify the entities, uh, get your application data graph and convert that into a GraphQL schema. And then that's all you need uh, to get started with dgraph. And dgraph gives you full-fledged um, CRUD GraphQL functions to build your applications. And all of this from uh, just your GraphQL types. Right. Um, yep. Uh, that's all I have uh, for this talk. Uh, I've, uh, and please do check out dgraph's website uh, to go visit dgraph.io. And more specifically, if you are interested about learning dgraph's GraphQL capabilities, you can take a look at dgraph.io slash GraphQL. Um, and dgraph is open source. Uh, you know, uh, please do feel free to uh, go download and and try dgraph. Uh, and um, I think the uh, easiest way for you to uh, be up to date with all the updates from dgraph labs is to follow dgraph labs on Twitter. Um, please visit at the rate dgraph labs, or you can follow me on Twitter at, at the rate hack into sh rav. That's hacking those shroud. That's me. Um, and uh, other two resources are uh, uh, to stay up to date would be to follow dgraph's blog at blog.dgraph.io. And um, also, uh, I think uh, GitHub would be a good place to follow up with all the products um, uh, development or, and, and even the product roadmap. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, your time. And uh, thank you, Carlos, for having me here. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a pleasure, Karthik. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us and uh, introducing us a bit about, about uh, the graph. I think it's such a promising technology. And uh, uh, we do have a question for you. So Tobias, actually, he is asking about what is the difference between the term, uh, the term and full text. Um, right. Right. Um, yeah. So. Um, these are two different database indexes, and uh, term index uh, enables you to search only based on our terms in a string. Uh, for example, uh, if this is your string, what I'm highlighting, uh, is my screen on? Yes, yes. Okay, yep. Um, okay, so the terms is, uh, the term index enables to search by any of the term in the string, but this terms has to be exact. Uh, for example, uh, we have, uh, let's say, Carlos Rufo. You know, if you are searching for Carlos, you can search for Carlos either by uh, searching for Carlos or for Rufo. So any of the terms um, in the string. But full text search uh, gives you more advanced string search capabilities. This is more meant for um, paragraphs of text. Text, like let's say, if you have a um, uh, uh, if you have the information for your entire blog, or it could be a tweet, or it could be a bio, right? And this uh, this essentially contains a lot of strings, sometimes hundreds of strings and hundreds of characters. Uh, I think full text search is ideal for searching uh, for uh, such entities, you know, uh, where you have a lot of words. And uh, in case of full text search, you need not search for the exact string. Uh, let's say your string says, um, I am talking at GraphQL of Hong Kong meet up today in the evening uh, you can search for talk hong kong graph that's it so you, you need not use the exact strings uh, you still be able to get uh, this uh, particular string in your search results so it's a more powerful uh, string search uh, uh, facility or a feature which is uh, typically used for uh, entities where you have a lot of words uh, as i said for instance uh, it could be a uh, uh, a blog post or a bio or a tweet wherein it's difficult to have a lot of characters, a lot of words in it. Awesome. Yeah, I think like a, yeah, it was a really good answer. And a, yeah, basically, I guess it's a different search functionalities depending on whatever you need in, in, in that filter, let's say. And a, to wrap it up, probably the QA, a, I, I got a good question. So um, I would like to know the main advantages of the graph. Uh, compared to other graph database solutions? Right. 
Um, firstly, dgraph is uh, our, our native graph database. If, if you are talking about just graph databases or, or databases which supports GraphQL. Uh, okay. So um, in terms of scalability or like distribution, is there any advantages of, 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 of the graph? Definitely, yes. So uh, firstly, dgraph is a, a distributed database, you know, and uh, which, which means it's uh, horizontally scalable. And uh, you can start with one node uh, where, you, where you're starting to build your application, onboarding your customers, but as your business grows, you can just keep adding the second node, the third node, and fourth node, and fifth node, and so on. It just seamlessly scales, uh, and and it's uh, specialized uh, for uh, you know uh, high throughput, low latency use cases. It's uh, built from ground up to be super performant for uh, graph like or graphical like workloads. Um, I think that scalability uh, e graph offers and its performance, uh, I think is is, is something uh, where dgraph stands out from uh, rest of the graph databases in the ecosystem. Okay, that, that that sounds that sounds awesome. Um, so yeah, I think that we can a uh, grab that for today. Um, yeah, so yeah, if if, if you want to, you can just like stop sharing your screen, Kartik, and then we can just jump into uh, just like we'll wrap it up probably. Sure. Um, great. Uh, so yeah, like thanks so much to everybody. A uh, there are another question. What is the testing history for it? Can you have any memory person on it? Or can you separate an automatic test? So I've, uh, I, there are like a few questions, uh, Karti, in a um, in the YouTube channel. But you can feel free to go there and just like stick with the Tama sermon in order to answer them. Uh, the sure. question because we are running out of time. And yep. uh, basically, to to finish off, I really wanna thanks to everybody to, to for for your time for sharing your knowledge. And a, probably like Tobias as a co organizer, he can jump in to close in the meetup. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. I think, first of all, uh, thank you, everyone, 